Hey everybody, I'm Lindsay Adler and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. And today I'm going to be doing a beauty shoot here in my studio and B&H is here to give you a look behind the scenes. What I usually do is I actually have a specific creative process and I remember when I used to think that creativity was luck because um, once in a while I'd have a great idea, it turned into a great shoot and then I'd feel like, nope, dry out of ideas, nothing left in me and so it really felt like creativity was something that happened once in a while. I get ideas from anywhere and everything, um, whether it's watching movies or Pinterest or fashion magazines or talking to my creative team. And so what I found is what all successful artists do. They develop a creative process that they can go back to over and over again to help come up with new ideas. What I do is for any shoot that I have, I pick one element. One thing that I know for sure, like I know what the model's going to look like, or I know what the makeup will look like, or I know what the location looks like. I take that one element and I write down everything that comes to mind, why I love that certain aspect, um, what it reminds me of. And so for example, let's say that there's a location that I know that I want to shoot. Well, how do I decide what model to put there, what hair and makeup would fit, what dress she should be wearing? What I do is I write down why I like that location. So maybe it's the colors of the location. Do I pick a color of clothing to match? Or do I make it the opposite so it complements the scene? Or maybe what I love about the scene is something graphic about it. Maybe it's a leading line. Maybe it's the symmetry of the scene. So perhaps the pose that I then choose is symmetrical to play off that symmetry. Or maybe I break up that symmetry. I mean, every single shoot that I do, I pick the one element that's certain and I explore it. And how I explore it is not just writing down words, but looking up images online. I look up images on Google Images, on Pinterest, anywhere that I can find inspiration. There's a very specific example that I use to really demonstrate how my creative process works. Because when you talk about creative process, it's such a like, nebulous, uncertain term until you can look at a real concrete example. So the example I use is from the very first real fashion shoot that I did. And by real fashion shoot, I mean professional models, professional hair and makeup, real wardrobe. And I was inspired by the location. So I actually did the shoot in upstate New York. My grandfather had planted trees all in a row. And so when they, they grew up, it made endless repeated lines and beautiful symmetry of these paths in the woods. And I knew my whole childhood I wanted to shoot there. And as soon as I discovered fashion photography, I knew that was an amazing location. So what I decided to do is use that location as the springing point for the entire shoot. So I really analyzed not just, okay, you know, okay, this location, I want to shoot there, but instead I analyzed why do I love this location? What draws me to it? What does it remind me of? And what I loved was symmetry, repetition, and repeated patterns. That is what drew me to that location. So the best shoot that I could possibly do would somehow incorporate those elements, and I would use that as my starting point for inspiration. So first, if it's symmetry, I wanted a very symmetrical composition. So I placed my subject in the center of a leading line. To also play up the symmetry, I picked clothing that had symmetrical shapes. I choose the pose that was symmetrical. And again, the leading line of the forest led to her. So I took those essential elements and built the shoot around it. So that was the most important image of that shoot, but I did dozens of other images where I was mirroring the trees, I was mirroring the sky, I was mirroring the forest, I was mirroring the barns. It all started from that single piece of inspiration, the location for that shoot. Before I approach a creative team or really go to put together a shoot, I try to roughly figure out my idea. Um, when I'm talking to creatives, I'm talking about hair and makeup and wardrobe, I need to give them a little bit of a direction of where I want to go. So for example, what I'll do is I'll put together something called a mood board. And a mood board is basically a visual representation of what a shoot is going to look like. So I'll have a photograph that represents what I think maybe the hair should look like. If I know the location, I'll put a picture of the location on. If I know what the lighting is going to be, I'll put a photo that kind of represents the lighting. So when I pass it off to my creative team, they know pretty much what I'm going for. And then we can all work together for the same visual goal. Once I pass it off to my creative team, I talk to them about what they think they can bring to the table, what kind of hair they think might look better, or if there's anything else they think I should make modifications for their vision. And of course, we try to do something a little different. It's great working with professionals in the field. For example, when I'm, I'm working with a professional makeup artist, she knows what the hot looks on the runway are. She knows what is new in makeup this season, and so I can apply 
those looks to my work to make it more relevant. And the exact same thing applies with hair as well as wardrobe. The next thing that I do is I select a model. And I have a variety of different agencies that I work with here in New York City. And so I send out a request for models and I briefly describe my shoot, the date and time and the type of model that I'm looking for. What are the most important elements of that individual? Whether it's color of skin, the length of their hair, their body type. And I send that to the agencies and they send me something back called a package. And the package of girls um, usually has anywhere between five and 15 different models to choose from. And I can go ahead and select the one that I think best fits my mood board, best fits the vision for this shoot. When the model arrives on set, that is actually typically the first time I've met the model, unless it's going to be a commercial shoot or some big paid shoot where we do something called go sees and we'll actually meet the models beforehand so we can make sure they really look like their books or get a sense for how they move and interact with the camera. When a model shows up on set, I give him or her the idea of what we're trying to achieve in this shoot, what you should feel. Um, and a lot of times I bring inspiration photos. That's totally fine. I will show them, okay, see these photos, this kind of pose, this is the feel we're going for. So they can see if it's really rigid with a lot of triangles and, and a lot of aggression or whether it's soft and demure to give them an idea of how we can work together as a creative team to get that final look. Once I shoot an editorial, I love seeing it in print. There's nothing better than walking into, you know, the local Barnes & Noble or walking into one of those specialty magazine shops, pulling the magazine off the rack and flipping to your beautiful images. It is truly one of the most rewarding parts of being a photographer. What's not rewarding about those shoots is money. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know this. So why shoot editorials? Editorials are treated as an advertisement for yourself. You can shoot whatever you want and it's, it's a way for you to show your skills and your creative vision. And so when you shoot this advertisement, someone opens up to that title page, it says photography by Lindsay Adler. And what you're hoping is that when an advertiser or a potential client is flipping through that magazine, they stop, they see your work and say, I need that photographer. I need that lighting. I need those skills and reach out to hire you. While you may not get paid anything for an editorial, you might actually make a significant amount of money from advertising. That's how you would make your living as a fashion photographer. The reason that I was drawn to fashion was because there weren't any expectations, there weren't any creative restrictions. I could do whatever I wanted, whatever I imagined. And my job was pretty fantastic. I would be creating beauty, that would be my job. And I've always been a bit of a problem solver. I liked the ideas that clients would come to me, they would present something they wanted me to achieve, maybe a way they wanted a client to look, or a target audience that they wanted to grab their attention. And my job was to find a visual solution to that problem. So I got to create beauty and solve problems. And so if you guys want to see more and you want to learn more from me, first of all, you can find me at b and at the event space several times a year. But I'm also an author of books and you can also find me online. My most recent book is called Creative 52. And it's all about invigorating your photography portfolio, taking your work up a notch. I teach hands-on workshops here in my studio, intensives that allow you to build your portfolio. Be sure to check me out at lindsayadlerphotography.com. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.